Bringing up children is a constantly changing challenge. Bringing up bilingual kids is a bit more complicated, but it's well worth it. I'm living proof. The good news is that kids and adults alike learn in the very same way. Having fun, discovering fascinating things, and bringing out our inner child. Oh yeah, let's go. We'll look into the ins and outs of raising your little rascals to love languages as we explore parenting in English on this week's episode of F. Why I welcome to for your info English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of FYI. And this episode, I've been wanting to make it since the first season. Now, those of you who are paying attention. We are in season five, so this has been a long time in the making, in the works, but it's finally time. And、uh, as a father, I have no excuse. And also, I want to dedicate this episode to one of my patrons who had a kid, and he said, "Listen, I don't want to monopolize the the show, and I know you accept topic ideas, but I'm a father, and I need to get some tips, and I need to learn some do's and don'ts." On parenting in English, so dedicated to my dear friend and patron, Patricio. Patricio, this one's for you and all the parents out there. And as I said in the intro, this isn't just a way to teach children. This is a way to teach big children too. And that I'm talking to each and every one of you who are listening right now, ladies and gentlemen. We've got an amazing special guest with us. She's an expert from the teaching. Point of view from the parenting point of view, so she's going to be able to help us out a lot. And、uh, ladies and gentlemen, a nice warm welcome to Tosh Pasqua. Hi, hi Alberto, thanks for having me. Hello, hello, and welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here on the show. And、uh, I want、uh, I want our listeners to get to know you, just in case they don't know. If you don't know who Tosh Pasqua is, you're missing out. But the good news is, you're going to find out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself.、Tash. Okay, so I'm Australian. My dad's Spanish. My mum's Swiss. Oh, cool.、Um, and I'm saying this because this is a very important part of 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 who I am. Like、sure. I I grew up in a trilingual house. Trilingual. Wow. <clears throat> well, it didn't work out. I'm bilingual, <laughs> well, so、hey. I can also say what doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we're going to look at the do's and don'ts, you know. And in addition to that, of course, I'm a teacher. I've been at Vaughan. I think eighteen years now. When you lose track, it's a long time. Yeah, That, that's what I、time. tell people. I'm like, I've been on the radio for oh, I don't know. <laughs> so you've、exactly. been here. You've got a lot of experience <laughs> under your belt. In tu haber, there's a nice expression. Exactly. Teaching and training other teachers, which I think is even harder, because one thing is teaching students, and another thing is trying to instill that,、um, you know, inculcar to instill that in a teacher, because. I mean, it's not just, you just snap your fingers and make a good teacher. Exactly. I mean, you have to have the personality. You have to have empathy, of course. So the right stuff has to be there. But I love, I loved. I, I'm not in teacher training anymore,、right. but I loved being able to make people fall in love with what they do. Because、yeah. not that's not. I mean, we're very lucky. People that love what they do.、Mm-hmm. Not everyone can say that. Sure,、um, sure. There、so. are a dime a dozen、mm-hmm. these days. People are just there clocking in and clocking out. Exactly. And you know when somebody's got the passion and. I think that's what marks a Vaughn teacher. I mean, this is not an ad for Vaughn, but if you want solutions in English, there's no other place. You got GrupoVaughn.com, which is、mm. the website. You've got the materials at VaughnTienda.com, and you have a show on Vaughn Radio. Tell us a little bit about your show. My show is called Back to Basics,、mm-hmm. and that's exactly what we do. We go back to basics. I think one of the most common mistakes that people make when learning a language or when learning anything, actually, is Feeling the need to keep on like learning new things and not reviewing enough, not、right. going back to the basics. Sure, thinking I know that stuff already. That's easy. I want to learn idiomatic expressions. Exactly, and that's great. Like、sure. expressions are great.、Mm, it's good to be eager. <laughs> exactly, but if the foundations of the building,、right. if they're weak, and、um, you're not going to keep on improving. I mean, this is biblical. You know the story of putting your on solid foundation. I、exactly. mean, it's the same in English. It's the same in anything. 
And I've how many times have you seen this? I'm sure more than I have, because you've probably had more students than I've had. But this thing of these students who know like what's good for the goose is good for the gander. They know every sin, single idiomatic expression. But then they say you was. Exactly. And I say, wait, 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 what just happened there? You just went from level nine to level mm -hmm. four or two. And, you know, what happened? So. Is this a common thing that a lot of people tend to focus on perfection and then they forget the basics? I think it's just human nature, really, mm -hmm. with everything, right? I think mm -hmm. we think that if we're doing something difficult, it means that we're improving, we're moving forward. And it's a little bit insulting, maybe, right? To right. do something basic. Well, I say uh, the first thing I do when I talk about your show on my show, I go, don't let the name fool you. It's basic, but I guarantee a lot of you will make mistakes on some of her challenges. Exactly. And even if you don't make a mistake, it's good to review the challenges Absolutely. no matter what you're learning you should always go back to the basics and review them even if it's just 10 minutes a day so yeah that's what the show is about it's for beginners but it's mm -hmm. also for intermediate and advanced students that need to review the basics i recommend it to all levels it's called back to basics i recommend it almost on a daily basis on my radio show and the show's doing really well i know on ivox you're in the top yeah. or number one or like this is <laughs> we need an applause i'll put it in after but yeah we need a round of applause for that that's great stuff <laughs> And you've been teaching for so long, so you've got the teaching thing down pat. But then, you know, taking that onto the radio, taking it onto social media, how have you noticed that that has been a challenge? Because one thing is teaching in a classroom with students, and another thing is teaching to virtual students and filming yeah. it in your bathroom or, or yeah. wherever you have a white background. <laughs> I mean... It's, I love it. I love being able to, you know, to reach out to so many people, but mm -hmm. it's also strange. It's sure, strange not sure. to be able to have that feedback, you know, of a student and correct that student or mm -hmm. make sure that they're improving, checking to see if something is too difficult, too easy. Right. Well, you can speaking, gauge exactly. the, uh, the audience or the class in this exactly. case. Exactly. But, you know, I mean, and I so love it, but it's totally, also strange. It's really they're strange. totally lost, but on the radio, you're like, I hope they're with me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I hope I didn't lose anybody, you know. But think about that. I think about that, too, because I go a mile a minute, as you know. In life, I get lost all the time when people are talking. Yeah. So it's normal that you get lost in your own language. You're like, well, come again? Yeah. I mean, yeah. why do you think we have these expressions? Could you repeat that? Come again? Exactly. Excuse me? Because, well, we miss things too, you know? Exactly. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, it is strange. Like, sometimes I'm, I just feel like I'm speaking to myself and you forget that so many people are actually listening to you and that you're helping so many people. Well, it's great. You really are. The show is Back to Basics. She's on social media as well. Tell us your social media handle so everybody goes over over to their social media platforms and follows you right now. <laughs> so on Twitter, it's Tash Pasqua all together. And on uh, Instagram, it's Tash dot Pasqua. All right, folks, I'll put links in the show notes so you can follow Tash, but definitely a pro. I just wanted to, yeah, I wanted her to share her credentials with you a little bit, <laughs> just so you guys know who you're dealing with here. Okay. <laughs> Teaching, you've taken it to media. But you also have experience teaching, I guess, the most important students you'll ever have, your children. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, obviously teaching them specifically English, teaching them all sorts oh, teaching of things. Teaching them manners, <laughs> uh, how to brush their teeth. You exactly. Know. Let, let's start from square one here. Like, you got to teach them everything. They don't, And it doesn't come with a manual. <laughs> exactly. But we, we speak English at home. Okay. Yeah, I was so, going to ask you. because you Now, let's go back to yours and then we'll let, let's go back to your home where you were brought up and then we'll bring it over to your home. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, the no, one no who's worries. going out of order here. So, trilingual home. Yeah. What languages did you hear at home? So, my dad spoke in Spanish to us mm -hmm. and my mum spoke in French oh wow to us and obviously we were in Australia so we grew up speaking in English and hearing and speaking sure exactly. exposed to that but nowadays I mean I speak Spanish I am fully bilingual absolutely yeah. but I don't speak French well, that's, I mean, with Spanish and English under your belt, I think you're doing okay. Yes, exactly. But it's just interesting to see, like, my mum wasn't very strict with us. That's Well, that's yeah. what, I, that was the next question. What yeah. were, the, what was the, the flaw there? If there were, everybody, every parent does the best they can. And course, we know that course. as parents. And it was a complicated situation. There were sure. three languages in the house already. Like, you know, well, it was I said in the intro, I said, if raising <laughs> kids is tough, well, bilingual kids exactly. is even tougher. Right? Exactly. But my mum would speak to us in French. She wouldn't force us to speak to her in, in in French. Gotcha. And then when she was tired and we wouldn't understand, she would just give up and speak to us either in Spanish or in, in English. Mm -hmm. And also I would say my dad did really well. Not only was he really strict and he would act like he didn't understand sometimes. My like, dad was the king of that. Is that a dad like, thing yeah, or what? Like, I'm like, I know you understand me. I would get frustrated. He's like, nope, not a yeah, word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> me, but Papa. another thing that he did really well, I think, was also get together with a lot of Spanish-speaking 
families as well. Mm -hmm. And so we were in a Spanish speaking environment in Australia. So we would have, you know, we would go to the Spanish club in Australia. Mm -hmm. We would come on holidays here. So you were getting the culture. I mean, that, that yeah. that's another thing. My dad was like, it's not just the language. I want you to eat paella. Mm -hmm. I want you to listen to Rafael. Like, yeah, exactly. I for me, it was Manolo Escobar. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, well, he's for Almeria in the house. Get ready for, don't, don't even get me started on my, and military marches. My dad went a little too far with it. You know? Exactly. I'm like, we don't want to join the Spanish military. We just want to feel pride being Spanish. But it's true now, the cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, that's uh, such an important part of being immersed in a language. It's being immersed in the culture and getting the way they think. Yeah, exactly. And and just everything. I mean, not only celebrating, you know, Spanish traditions Reyes and things or, like that, mm -hmm. but, you know, like the music as well. Mm -hmm. And even just like we used to get, because back in, in that time, we didn't, we couldn't watch TV shows, but they would record things like on VHS sure. and send it all the way to Australia. We would watch like the New Year's, you know, on New Year's they have the show. We would watch it three months later in now Australia. You're, now you're the first ones to celebrate. <laughs> It, but before you would get it like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah for, you, we forget about those days because we're used to instant gratification with the Internet. Yeah. Send. OK, it's in Australia. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, in a no. file that they can just click on in one second. It's so easy nowadays, right, really. Right. right. But Australia, too. Like, well, I remember that reminds me in Spain, the cultural things. I would come here and I couldn't spoil Back to the Future for three years. Exactly. Because it would take uh -huh. there was such a lag time. Mm -hmm. Now everything's kind of connected. But yeah, sure. I, I get it. I, I noticed that, too with a lot of friends who could have been bilingual or trilingual, their parents didn't, they weren't demanding enough. And again, we don't blame parents. We do the best Parents we can. are working. You know, as soon as you become a parent, you're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> parents yeah. do the best they can. And exactly. whatever that is, given the circumstances, exactly. that's what we do. Whether we're teaching our kids English or to brush, to brush their teeth now. Taking that into your home now as a mother, as a parent, uh, what things are you doing the same? What things uh, are you trying to tweak? if you will. I'd say that I'm doing a lot of the things that my dad did. Um, one of the differences is that my husband also speaks in English to my kids. He, he has an advanced level. He can, of course, because of his level. But we decided to speak in English to our kids. And I think another difference is that I'm doing it from the point of view as a, of a teacher. Right. Right. And I think you're not just like my yeah. cuñado gave me an English book and I'm just going to grab some phrases from it. Exactly. Like I'm I'm a teacher at heart. You know, like. <laughs> and you know, you know what you're doing. You know, exactly. uh, like I find myself with my daughter doing the Vaughn method. Me too. I'm like, this isn't a pen. This is an elephant. She's like, it's not an elephant. I'm like, great, negative. <laughs> exactly. Or I'd be like, ask me. Ask me if I like. Ask me if I like ice cream. Ask your brother if he likes ice cream. And it's, this is it's what I do. It's proved to me that the Vaughn method works. <laughs> yeah. It really works. It does. It does. It's repetition. It's correcting the mistake, and it's using the language. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Is, that, Poppy, that's not an orange. And, exactly. and a lot of times, I just see if she's paying attention. I'm like, oh, look at this orange. And she goes, Poppy, that's a strawberry. It's not an orange. I'm like, lesson done. Done. That's it. It is. It isn't. We're done for today. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's exactly it. And I, I can see it in like, I don't know when they used to make mistakes with certain things. I do a, a drill. I mean, I was hiding the fact that it was a drill. But sure, you never tell game. them no. we're going to do an English class now because no, yeah, they will they will run. <laughs> exactly. But I'd be like, you know what? Let's play a game. Ask your brother like whatever. And, you know, sure, to use sure. that let's weak guess point. what color this thing. Exactly. Right. Or I spy or whatever. Any sort of thing, any sort of game with a lot of repetition. Petition, like sure. go fish to practice right. have do you have do you have and right. I love those games because you know and then old I maid these these are classics uno even with numbers exactly sure. and we're going to talk about that I don't want to get ahead of it, but board games we can learn colors numbers exactly uh, but like seeing it from the point of view of a teacher like saying you know what instead right. of do you have for for go fish I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get her to say have you got I want or, or I want. right yeah, right or you're like I'll like, change it exactly. let me put it in third person has mommy got exactly yeah mommy's exactly. got that so. So, right, right. You're you're flipping it. And you're making sure that they get it. Wow, that that's really cool because that's another thing I wanted to mention. I think when people are think of it as this is an English class, this is an English lesson, especially kids, they're going to turn their brains off. But if you're like, who wants to play a game? Exactly. And again, what is the biggest thing with social media now? Gamifying stuff. Mm -hmm. For adults, by the way. Yeah, for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, okay, who can guess the correct answer here? You know, it works. It gets kids interested. And I remember a question I heard, uh, and I hear it pretty often. Parents are like, I can't get my kid interested in English. I just can't. Whatever I do, he's not interested in English. And I said, okay, stop. What is your kid interested in? Mm -hmm. Dinosaurs. 
Okay, we'll tell them you're going to uh, get them some movies and some books about dinosaurs, but they're in English. Mm -hmm. I guarantee the kid's going to try and understand those movies and those books because you already hit the vein. Exactly. You, you you're found the fun. sweet spot that the, ki the kid likes dinosaurs. So talk to him about dinosaurs in English. He's going to listen. But that happens to us, not just with kids. Right. We want to do stuff that's fun. And, you know, nobody wants to do something that's boring. Routine. Something, exactly. Right. Something that they feel that they're that they're not good at. That's another thing. Right. Like, kids like frustrated. doing oh, yeah, yeah. what they're good at. Kids are competitive. Losing is not a good, is not an option. I know with my daughter, I'm, start, I'm work, we're working on that. That, you know, honey, you got to lose sometimes. You know, <laughs> exactly. She has to learn, but I'm not that good at losing either. To tell you the truth. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. First, we got to set a good. We've got to lead by example. That's something I'm learning. Hey, this is a learning lesson. This is a, a, a lesson that anyone can learn, right? Exactly. From the parents, we're learning something. Mm -hmm. Kids are learning. But again, we're not that different. It's the one thing that keeps coming up over here, and it's great. So, and times have changed too. Like uh, I, I think about, you know, when I was a kid, talking about how we're, our parents did it, and talking about how we do it. I didn't have Google. You didn't. I mean. I mean, we're, I don't know if we're on the same age, but by what you were saying, VHS and yeah. all of this, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> and I just remember if you wanted to know a song, I remember listening mm -hmm. to Raphael, pausing mm -hmm. the tape, writing down the lyrics, transcribing it and singing it. And I was like, wow. And now just grab a hairbrush, go to YouTube and put Raphael, or whatever song in yeah. English. Yeah. Lyrics and you're singing "Let It Go." You got yeah. your own karaoke going over there. Yeah, it's much easier now in a way. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also think that because we didn't have that much to choose from right. back then, you you're just listening to the same cassette right. all over day right, right. in the car. At least with me on a trip, it was like eight hours all the time. And you knew it by heart, every <laughs> little pause in that. And yeah. that helped learning these songs by heart and mm -hmm. listening to them over and over and over again. The repetition helps. thing, as exactly. you said, exactly. and I think part of our goal. I always say as teachers is to make repetition fun, mm -hmm, exactly. like to take something that can by by nature be uh, boring, annoying and make it fun. Mm -hmm. But exactly. But that's why, like, for example, these games that we're going to speak about games later on. But that's mm -hmm. what I'm always trying to look for. Things where there's repetition, mm -hmm. but they don't even realize that they're repeating it. So if I'm playing Go Fish and I'm like, do you have, do you have, do you have? But it's a game. They don't even realize that they're doing it. And I right. think that's the key with kids. Sure, sure. Just lie to them, guys. Mislead them. Okay. <laughs> No. Hey, but you're doing it for, for good, right? You're using your power for good. <laughs> times have changed. We adapt to the times. I agree, too. Sometimes having too many options, the kids don't know where to turn. Mm -hmm. All right. What are some of the biggest mistakes now? And I know this is a big, big deal, too, because one thing is how we raise our children at home, manners, language. What about the education system? I know that part of the reason we have jobs in Spain is because the education system, at least in this area, failed or they there were some things that were not done right. We had a lot of people with titulos, as we know, yeah. but nobody that could do a job interview in English. I think the problem up until, well, even now a little bit, I think mm -hmm. things have changed a little bit in, in recent years. Mm -hmm. But the main problem is that English was taught through writing and reading mm -hmm. and not speaking and not listening, of course. Mm -hmm. And it was taught as if it were... Latin. It was taught as if it were a dead language. It was It was not. A language exists to be spoken, and that's not how it was taught. It was taught in a boring way, mm -hmm. with a lot of rules, a lot of... My tailor is rich. I mean, how does that help you? <laughs> exactly. My and tailor's also, rich. My mother's knew... in the kitchen. <laughs> what? <laughs> but also, they knew grammar inside out. Yeah, yeah. But then not Better how than to use it. Yeah. When I started teaching, I remember in our training class, we had a, a, a guy from Spain, David, I'll never forget. And a lot of times, Fitz would be like, David, can you explain it to the natives, please? Yeah. Because we, we knew how to say it, mm -hmm. but we didn't know that's the present perfect continuous. Exactly. <laughs> you know, for example. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and that means that just people were feeling have always felt frustrated. Mm -hmm. They felt that they weren't good at speaking sure, language. Inadequate, so, exactly. Which is a horrible feeling. And no one wants to do anything that they're bad at. Yeah, yeah. Really. You're like, well, if we're bad at it, we're just going to try something else. Different strokes for different folks. Exactly. But the problem is that they weren't taught properly. That's, right. that's the reason. Right. It can't be that a whole country is just bad at English. No, no, I don't. I, I refuse <laughs> to believe that. And I think that's why Vaughn, you exactly. know, Vaughn's like, no, no, we just got to change things. And that's one thing that Vaughn has said. Okay, forget about it. Write it down after. Mm -hmm. First, I want to know that you get it verbally. Mm -hmm. And then you can write down the structure. But um, just say it to me first. You know what I mean? And that's the real order. Mm -hmm. Kids spend two years without saying a word, mm -hmm. just listening. Yeah. 
And then you know, they put things together. Oh, no, it's not that. It's this one. It's Which, by the way, they use logic, which we lose. Mm-hmm. She's like, yo sabo. I'm like, mm-hmm. I vote for that one, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My kid's in English as well. No, They're like, I sa- touched the bowl. You're like, the, yeah, because yeah. it makes sense. <laughs> so kids make sense. It's the language that doesn't yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> at yeah, yeah, some yeah. point, you know. But now I think... I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect now, Mm. but I do think that things are improving little by little. I felt that too. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think the bilingual system in, at least in Madrid, there are a lot of negative aspects of the public bilingual schools. I'm not saying that there aren't. It's Mm. not perfect. And there's a long way to, I mean, this is a new, these are new changes that you're talking about. Exactly. But what I can see is that when people finish high school, one of the main differences is they can communicate. Even if they're making mistakes, they can communicate. Mm. They're not embarrassed to speak in English. Right. And they're not scared of English. Like you speak to them, even mm. if they don't understand, they're relaxed and they'll just ask they're you like, to repeat. Well, I'll make a mistake. Or, well, I tell my students all the time, I'm like, nobody carries a grammar book around. Mm-hmm. So once you're out there in the real world, you just got to say it. Mm-hmm. And if, if people look confused, say it a different way. Exactly. I exactly. said, you know, because no one's listening. Oh, well, she said was and were. If they understand you, they understand you. And if you break down communication, it's two things. Understanding and being mm-hmm. understood. Mm-hmm. It's a tennis match. <laughs> exactly. And even in our own language, we sometimes don't express ourselves properly. Of like sometimes not. we're eloquent and can speak well, why really do you, why well. Why do we and... have falling out? You know, we, mm-hmm. have, we fall out with people mm-hmm. because, oh, well, she thinks this and I think that. But really, we're speaking the same language, but we haven't, exactly. you know, we don't agree on what's been said, which is, is quite normal. So, yes, the educational system did a lot of harm. I mm-hmm. guess not on per. I guess people do the best they can with mm-hmm. what they have, but and it's not even about native teachers because a lot of people said there were no native. Te- it's not about that. No. It's about where the focus is. Are, are we learning to read and write, or are we learning to speak? Yeah, we we'll learn like, to read and write after we speak, like a kid does. Exactly, but back in the day, like classes, well, and still to this day, there are mm. some schools like this where classes are taught in English. Sorry, in Spanish. Yeah. So it's English classes are taught in Spanish. They talk about English grammar in like, Spanish. Like, ahora vamos a hablar del plus cuan perfecto. Like, <laughs> why don't you say now we're going to talk about whatever. Exactly. So sure, the, the best way to learn is being exposed to it. That's how we learn. Exactly. Even if that means that people are going to be frustrated. Right. I think Absolutely. people are scared of being frustrated. That's I've, another thing. And I, I've noticed that the, the improvement that you said that's happening. And I've noticed that in general, in this younger generation now, the attitude towards English, the the way we approach it has changed. I When I moved here 20-something years ago, you would say the word English and people would hide under the table. Mm-hmm. They would literally be like, oh, no, no, not me. Yeah. Get, get out of here. They, we stopped fearing it. Exactly. And, we, and I think people are now starting to grasp it. It's more accessible than ever with stuff like Vaughn Radio, Instagram accounts like yours or mine, who every day you can learn exactly. mini lessons. Like You don't even have to spend money. Mm-hmm. These days, honestly, I mean, there's nothing like having your own personal trainer. I always say a teacher is your personal trainer. Yeah. Because like, yeah, you can d- learn it on your own. But what about that Saturday you wake <laughs> exactly. up you're like, I'm going to have a donut. <laughs> That's when your teacher's like, no donuts. Get over there and you know yes. repeat the translation list like I told you. Yeah. So it's having that that coach, that, that cheerleader who's yeah. behind you and who knows. That's what the best thing is about my students. And a shout out to all of you, especially my super duper students, Javier. Paco, Roberto, David, Jose Maria, Mila, and Alex. And don't forget about my interstellar students, Carmen, Lina, Isa, Paco, and Edgar. If you guys want to find out how you can join my community and get bonus episodes, PDFs, and even classes with me, go over to patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso and find out more. And if you want a free sample, just let me know. It's patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. What are you waiting for? We're having tons of fun. Speaking of, let's get back to our show. I know your mistakes like the back of my hand and I hold you accountable. Yeah, like a good personal <laughs> trainer. I'm like, yeah. I got, did you say, I, 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 <laughs> You know, if he said people is, I don't mind. But if you said it, I'm gonna, I am about to go nuts over here. So, and it's cool because then they're like, oh no, they take it like so. They're like, I'm so sorry. I know, right? <laughs> so it's cool you have that over there, and that, and obviously teaching your children, you have to have that special bond. I think with any, if you're a good teacher, you care about your students. Mm-hmm. And if you care about your students, you eventually have a relationship with them that's more than just teacher-student. Exactly. I think it's it's fine. I've, for me, the best teachers in my life have mm-hmm. been teachers that were very, very, very demanding mm-hmm. 
but also very caring and very nice. Approachable. Approachable, like, nice. You can see that they're doing it, mm-hmm. you know, with the best intentions. Sure. But they're demanding because demanding, being demanding shows that you care. If I didn't care, yeah. I wouldn't even, you know, bother. Yeah, sure, um, sure. So the best teachers in my life have always had that balance between being very demanding. And fun. And, and fun. Yeah, and being like, demanding I, I and fun, nice. I learn, but uh, I know that they're going to hold me accountable exactly. at the end of the day. Yep. And that's so important. That's really, really important. All right. Well, we're talking about some of the most effective ways of teaching kids. Well, not really. We're going to get into that now. We, we touched on it a little bit, but what are some of the best ways to teach kids slash adults? We already said gamifying, making it fun. What, uh, what do you think? What are some, some other tricks that we can use that'll help us teach or learn? I mean, that's the thing too. I, I, uh, another, it's kind of a cliche, but I believe a good teacher is a good learner. Yeah. You have to love to learn to love to teach and vice versa. Yeah, definitely. You know? I mean, I think, I think it depends what level the kids have. I think it depends what level the parents have. Okay. Oh, yeah, Not everyone sure. is completely bilingual mm. and I think it's taking baby steps, especially Mm. if the kids don't speak English. Maybe they don't have a good relationship with English. They don't view it as something Mm. positive. I think baby steps are very important. So maybe it's just choosing a moment Mm -hmm. every day where you're going to, I don't know, maybe at the beginning, it's only 10 minutes. Maybe it's when you're having dinner. Maybe it's bath time. An activity, like linking it to a a part of the routine. Part of the routine. So maybe every Mm. time we sit at the table, we're going to practice English. Maybe bath time is always going to be in English but I think it is taking baby steps or maybe it's playing a game every day just one 10 minute game with your kids sure. in English every day and then building from there right because I think it again it's important for kids not to feel frustrated I think it's important for them to see English as something positive a part of their routine an activity as an you activity said. and it's very very important for kids to feel that they're good at it. This is key for oh, okay. kids. Yeah, you keep bringing this up and it's so true, guys. I, yeah. mean, really. I mean, for example, when I, when I, I, I don't teach kids anymore, but when I used to teach well, kids. Well, every day you teach well, kids. Well, I do, I do. <laughs> I teach my own kids. But I mean t- kids that don't speak English. I know, I know. Um, when I start from scratch with them, I, you know, I say, for example, I might show them pictures and I'm like, is this, and I choose words that I know that they're going to understand because right. they're similar in Spanish, right? Sure, so I'll say, sure. is this an elephant? And then you can right. see they're like, oh, I understand. I understand. Understand, yeah, you know, yeah, sure. or is this, you know, they know spider because of Spider-Man, for example. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is this a spider? And they know spider. Is this a lion, you know, and rawr, you, you rawr, can even do like a do sound rawr. effect. But the kids, you can see something starts clicking when they think, right. I understand English. It's right. because you're simplifying sure, <laughs> sure. at the beginning yeah, and right. you're using similar words. But the key uh, with kids, I think, for to get them motivated is for them to think that they're actually really good at it and they're doing well. I right, think that's right. really important for kids. So I guess as a teacher, the tip would be you got to make your classes challenging. Yeah. You got to make your lessons challenging. But at the same time, the students got to feel like they're making progress and Especially they're getting with it. Kids. At Especially the beginning, the kids. first few classes, just make them feel that they're actually amazing. And know? they'll get it. And, and I know you've worked now, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but you've worked on the Disney yeah. uh, courses with Vaughn. Let's let's do a little pitch there, sure. Yeah, so um, this one was maybe four years ago. Mm. We we designed, I, I personally designed all the Disney content and adapted mm. the content, the Disney content. So basically every single class is based on a movie and the grammar structure, the songs, the vocabulary, everything has to do with the movie. And we, we have songs that are repetitive in the sense that, you know, we repeat the structure that we want, the key structure that we want, but the kids don't even realize this. Right, they're just they're singing, singing the along, song and sure. that's it. And then we have situations in the class with realia, so with props, okay. to practice the vocabulary. So, for example, mm. if we wanted to practice, can I have, mm. we'd have a restaurant, you know, we'd have a tablecloth uh. and some toy food, and then they had to order food in so a there's restaurant. Role play- I mean, there's this role is playing, great. and then they have to, again, it's a drill. Yeah. It is a drill. Like w- with a, with but an using- Something they're I used just say, to. ask me. Ask right. me if you can have whatever. Ask me if you can you, have. You can't just go into it with a kid. A you got to ease them into it. Exactly. They have to think <laughs> that it's a game, and so or it's role play or it's right. whatever. And they, that's that's how we hide. Who wants to the eat? Drills. And oh, I want. Okay. Well, you okay. got to ask. ask. You got to ask, right? ask. You know, uh, order this. Now say, you're can like, I have? now you got their attention. So getting their attention <laughs> is with kids, uh, with adults too, but with kids, it's harder. <laughs> I mean, adults. 
adults know from that the they get-go. need English. Right. They're more practical. And if I say we have to do an exercise Guys, practicing irregular verbs, right, right, right. this is, you know, right. I can make it fun, but an adult can understand. Right. And you, you know. can cater it the same way we said to them. Like, if you know you've got three guys in your class who love soccer, love football. Yeah. You're like, did Casilla stop as many goals as Courtois? So you just take the lesson and adapt it. Exactly. To the but I don't have to hide it as much, I think. Yeah, exactly. With kids, you're like, who wants to? <laughs> right? No, no, no. The exactly. voices. Well, we're going to talk about all that stuff in the bonus part, but uh, we're going to talk about do's and don'ts. And uh, I want you, as we sign off, A, to repeat all your information social media, the name of your show, because I want everybody to be able to find you. I will put the links in the show notes, but. Tosh, give us your information. Okay, so it's Back to Basics every day on Vaughn Radio at 3 o'clock. And uh, on Twitter, you can follow me. Um, what is it? <laughs> Let me think. Tash Pasqua all together. And then on Instagram, Tash.Pasqua. And I highly recommend you guys follow the show. I also recommend that you guys check her out on social media. She's teaching us some really important stuff that everybody needs to know. As I said, the show's called Back to Basics, but that's why higher levels, you know, the highest levels out there should be familiar with this stuff. So give it a listen. I think you'll love it. And uh, we're going to sign off. My daughter, Lara, is going to sign off. Oh, that's amazing. Right now, despedirse. She loves to participate. And I always see, I'm, always, I'm like, you want to record some stuff <laughs> with me? It's an English lesson. Right. Yeah, yeah. So she sits in front of the microphone. She feels like I'm doing some, you know, something cool here See? and I'm getting some amazing content. And in fact, in the intro, that voice, that was my daughter participating and she's going to sign off now. Despedirse. But I want you to sign off. If you could give, we've looked at a lot of advice and we're going to look at a lot of great, great ideas in the, the bonus part. But before we sign off, give us one piece of advice. If you had to choose one for students, because right now, you know, we've been talking about what to do as an educator, as a parent, for a student learning English. If you could just say one, because I know you've got a lot. And that's a difficult question, but it's, I figured it's a good way to go into our bonus episode. Keep on going. I love it. I love it. Short and sweet. Keep on going. Bye-bye, amigos. This is FYI. Folks, I hope you'll join us in the bonus part of today's FYI. FYI.